Amen. All right, kiddos, you're going to bounce. You're going to stay. There we go. Yeah, all right. Oh, once, twice, no? Okay. okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, well, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, oh, there you go. She should go ahead and get her, her stuff in. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so, uh, you know, like we mentioned, uh, Merry Christmas uh, to, to all of you. Uh, I hope that yesterday you had a, a wonderful day, uh, and, and I'm sure that uh, you, know, you got together with family uh, and, and, and just uh, got to celebrate uh, the birth of Christ, and opened, a bunch up, opened up a bunch of gifts and, and um, you know, eat a bunch of good food. Uh, you may have some Christmases to do today, I don't know, but uh, uh, Christmas is a holiday that spans, you know, across uh, many, many meetings and many sides of the family, um, but, uh, but it's great time, uh, it's, a, it's a great time to spend time with family um, and, and celebrate the birth of Jesus. Uh, it, it's good to stop and remember the Son of God, the creator of the universe, uh, who came to this earth as a baby uh, with the sole purpose uh, to offer himself up as a sacrifice uh, uh, for mankind. Um, but, but now that we're on the other side um, of, of Christmas, now that, that, that Christmas, the holiday has passed, uh, we're on the other side, it, it's, it, sometimes it just fades away. Um, you know, we, we, you know, uh, through, sometime through this week, we'll take these Christmas trees down and we'll lug them downstairs. The ornaments will be bouncing all over the place. I'll come back and pick them up and I'll be covered in glitter. have to go home and, like limb roll myself. Um, you know, but we'll take all of the Christmas stuff down, you know, and, and when you get to your house, you'll undecorate or and, and redecorate into your, your normal decorations. And, and you take all that stuff and you just pile it in a bunch of boxes and lug it out to the garage or up to the attic or out to the shed, wherever you keep your stuff, all the decorations and lights and tinsels and ornaments and, and we get rid of all that stuff um, and we just kind of tuck it away. And sometimes what we do uh, with Christmas is we take this, this joy that we have of the birth of Jesus and this truth that God loves us and we kind of tuck that in with those boxes and tuck that in with the tinsel and, and we, we tuck that away as well. We tuck away the truth that Jesus, the Son of God, the creator of the universe came to this crummy little earth, uh, lived a life and then died for us. You know, we, we know the truth. We celebrate the truth. We remind ourselves of the truth, especially, you know, in this season. You know, last week we had a, a great uh, Christmas service, I guess you would call it. And, you know, worship was awesome. And looking at who Jesus was or, and is and will always be it is awesome. But that excitement uh, fades. Um, the emotion high, the emotional high that we get off from that uh, fades as time goes by. But, but it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be that way. It should, we shouldn't come to a point uh, where we just come and we celebrate Christmas and we have this joy of Jesus coming and, and the truth that God loves us so much that he sent his son. We shouldn't take that and just kind of put that on the back burner as the, uh, as the uh, uh, season goes on. Just because we flip the calendar doesn't mean we should flip away the truth that Jesus came for us. We have to do all that we can to intentionally hold on to that truth. We have to do all that we can to remember the fact that Jesus came for us, to remember the love that God had for us throughout the rest of this year, throughout into the uh, beginning of next year, throughout the rest of our lives. Um, there's like there, there's four steps that we're going to cover today. Um, for, uh, it's a four-step action plan, and we, we've covered it in the past, and we will cover it in the future because these four things are so important. They're so important when it comes to remembering who Jesus is and who Jesus will always be and keeping the truth of God's love and, and the truth of his grace and the, the events of the birth and death and resurrection uh, in our hearts. It's so important. The first step is believing in him. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? That sounds that sounds like super like base, like 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 shallow, uh, you know, right on the surface. Believe in Him, and, and when we think of, of of believing in Jesus, we generally think of a one time thing. This is a one time deal. You come to the realization, you come to this cognitive, uh, this logical response in your brain that yeah, there is a God. Yeah, uh, He sent His Son Jesus, and yes, this is a physical thing that actually happened. But there is so much more than that. It's so much more than just a one-time decision because there's so many things uh, that are more encapsulated in believing in who Jesus is. So many different levels of believing. I believe that Grant exists. I know you're going to be up here, so hey, you can hear you can, you're here for it. I believe that Grant uh, exists as, as a true person. He's a physical person who is sitting there, but if he tells me that his room clean, his room is clean, eh, I'm 
may not fully believe that. I may not believe in Grant when he says that his room is clean. Uh, because he's a teenager and teenagers are messy. And, and you know, so it generally takes a couple different uh, checks and inspections and pointing out the garbage hiding under his bed uh, before he uh, really has his room clean. Um, I believe that, you know, the federal government is real and it is there, but do I fully believe that they have my best interests at heart at all times? Uh, definitely not, no matter who uh, is in charge. So there's a big difference in believing and trusting. There's a big difference in believing that something exists and believing in something. A huge difference because this is so much more than just believing a fact. Faith has to do with trust. And when we say we believe in Jesus, we are saying that we trust in Jesus. We are saying we believe that Jesus came. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that he's a part of God. We believe that he was there in the beginning with God and he was a part of creation. We believe that Jesus came down to this earth and was born as a man, God incarnate, God with us. We believe all that. We believe that he lived a perfect life. We believe that he went to the cross to take on the sins of mankind. And we believe that he came out of the grave on that third day. We believe all of those things. But it's more than that. We believe that he will take care of us. We believe that he has taken away our sins. We have faith that, that he will always be there for us when we go through life's darkest moments. We have faith in Jesus. There's more than just a one time believing in Jesus. It is an everyday thing, an everyday moment of trusting Jesus and trusting God uh, and knowing that they are there for you. Even in the most famous verse in the Bible, we see this truth. Look at John 3, 16 and 17. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That verse is everything right there. God loved the world so much that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That word believe is so important. That word that Jesus uses there in verse 16 for believe has a, so much more meaning than, than just to believe. That word believe is from the Greek word pistio, sure, um, and it has a full spectrum of meanings. This is what that word, that Greek word means. It means to have faith in or with respect to a certain thing or person. To credit or to entrust, especially one's spiritual well-being to one. To believe, to commit, and to trust. Being committed to one's trust or into their charge. So you can see that that word that Jesus says, that whoever believes in me will have eternal life. There is a lot more going on than just someone who believes uh, in the physical presence that he was there. There is trust. There is commitment. There is knowing that this person that you are putting your faith into will take care of you, will take care of your spiritual well-being. It is an everyday faith, an everyday commitment to believe in him. So when we think about Christmas and we think about, you know, packing Christmas away and putting it in the garage and letting this truth of Christmas fade away, we have to remember to believe in Jesus, to put our faith in Jesus and to trust him not just once, but every single day. And it takes us right to the next step of keeping this truth of Jesus and Christmas alive, and that is to die with him. That's it. Now, there you go. That, that, if, if believe in Jesus is, is, is like on the surface thing, uh, dive in, that's a bit deep. That sounds like a bit much. Now, obviously, we're not talking about physically dying. There will be no Kool-Aid handed out here today. Uh, this is talking about dying to ourselves. Dying to the passions and the desires that our sinful nature drive us to. Dying to the selfish ambition that we all have within us. This is talking about dying to what we want for our lives. You know, as human beings, we are really good at making plans. How many of you guys are planners? How many of y'all are planners? Okay, just a few people. Okay, go. You're pointing fingers. I love that. I love this is what I have learned in my, in my not so many years on this planet. If you're married, you are either a planner or you're married to a planner. And that's just, that's really all there is to it. My wife is a planner. You know, there's like, she has everything. She's so organized and I'm just like, whatever. We're going where we're going and you tell me when to go. Uh, but as human beings, we love plans and we love to know exactly what's going on. And we love to just be perfectly organized. And Jesus says, look, I need you to lay all that down and just follow me. 
Jesus is interested in putting us putting down what we want for our lives in the direction that we think that our lives should be going in to follow the direction that he has put before us. I mean, just look at the life of the Apostle Paul. I mean, if you if you study through uh, the New Testament, you see who Paul was. I mean, he was he was the man. I mean, he was climbing the ladder of the religious elite uh, uh, there in Judea. And he was he was in charge of bringing up Christians. If they had a thirty under thirty, Paul would have been on the front page of that magazine. That's how that's how that's who he was. He was the man. But then when he met Jesus and he converted to following Christ, Jesus had to completely change the driving force of his life. Look what Paul told the churches in Galatians, Galatians 2. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. In the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I don't nullify the grace of God, for if by righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. He says, look, I am crucified with Christ. He says, this life that you're looking at me right now, this life that I'm living in is not I who am living this life. It is me just living through Jesus. It is me living the path that Jesus laid out for me. That's what it means to die with Jesus. Paul is putting off this life that he had. Paul is putting off the plans that he had. Paul is putting off the will that he had for his life. He's putting off the sin that was inside his heart. Paul died to himself so that he could live through Jesus. And that's what we are called to do as well. We're called to lay down this life and pick up Jesus. We are called to put down the sin and the flesh in this world and put on Jesus in righteousness and put on living for the kingdom of God. This faith that we have is not just a passing uh, uh, faith. This, this life, this faith that we live is not just a part-time gig. It's, it's not something that just controls a small portion of our life. It's definitely not something that we just kind of control and compartmentalize and pack away like we pack away our Christmas decorations. This faith isn't something that we do just once or twice a year on Christmas or Easter. It shouldn't even be something that we do just on Sunday mornings. Our faith should be a part of and should impact every single aspect of our lives, every single area of our lives. And that is what happens when we die to Christ, when we die, uh, we die to ourselves and, and live for Christ. And that takes us to the, the third step, and that's live for him. Those kind of go together. If we're going to die to ourselves, we have to live for something or someone, and that's Jesus. I mean, be just like if, if you're gonna if you're gonna start eating healthy in the new year. New Year's is coming, so it's time to go buy some salad. But if you decide you're no longer gonna eat all the fatty and terrible and sweet foods, you've got to replace it with something. You can't just not eat forever; that won't work. Uh, you have to replace it with good, you know, clean, healthy food. And it's the same way here. You know, if we make the decision that we have to die to ourselves and put ourselves off and take our wills down, you know, down and put them away, then we have to pick something up, and that is Jesus. There's no point in putting ourselves off if we don't pick up Jesus. There is no purpose to putting off our wills and dreams if we're not willing to pick up and put on what Jesus has for us. There's no point in putting down the keys to our own kingdom if we are not willing to work in service to the kingdom of God. We were created to be in relationship with God and to do good works that bring glory and majesty to him. We are here on this earth as followers of Christ to do everything that we can to further the kingdom of God, to further the gospel here on this earth. Our entire life uh, as Christians should, should be to this. Our entire life should be following Jesus. Our entire life should be doing whatever Jesus wants us to do and doing everything that we can to work for the kingdom of God. When we're at our houses, when we're raising our children, spending time with our spouses, we should be focused on the kingdom. When we're at a ball game, at school, at dinner, at family get-togethers, we need to be focused on the kingdom. Every single aspect of our lives needs to revolve around the kingdom of God. Everything that we do, every person that we come in contact with, every situation that we find ourselves in, we should be focused for the kingdom of God. Because that's what living for Jesus looks like. And that's why we were created. Paul wanted to get this through to the church in Ephesus, so that he wrote this. He says, we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good 
works which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. We are the workmanship of God, created by God with this whole purpose of bringing glory to God. And we do that uh, through walking with Jesus and living our lives for him and living our lives for his will and living our lives for his kingdom. And that takes us to that, to that last step, to that fourth step, and, 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 and that keeps true with furthering Jesus. The last step is to proclaim him, to proclaim Jesus. The best way to keep the truth of, of Christmas alive and the, and the truth of Jesus coming to this earth is to tell people about it. I mean, it's pretty simple. Eh? The, the best way to keep this joy of God's love and this, this truth and this realization that God loves us so much that he sent his only son, the best way to keep that alive is to tell people about it. Tell people the facts about Jesus, the fact that Jesus came to save them, the fact that Jesus came to give his life as a sacrifice for theirs. And for us to live our lives in such a way that when people see us, they know that something's different. To live our lives in such a way that when people see us, they can see Jesus through us. So that God receives the glory and that God receives the honor. And I'm going to be honest, church. As a church, we need to no longer be shy or worried about spreading the good news of Jesus. We have the greatest news ever. And we don't ever tell anybody. We have the greatest news in all of history and we keep it to ourselves. We're afraid that it might be weird. We're afraid that it might be awkward. We're afraid that we might offend someone. Because for some reason it's become offensive to share our faith and the church has just stepped right into that cowardice. It needs to stop for us. There should be nothing that should stop us from lovingly sharing with people what Jesus has done for them. Because I can tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt, it would be much more offensive to let someone die and spend eternity separated from God <coughs> than to tell them of the one who can save their soul. It will be much more awkward on the day of judgment when those whose names are not written in the book of life are cast into the fire and those are the ones that we personally kept the gospel from. It would be much more awkward than that than to tell them about it. To tell them about a God who loves them so much that he sent his son to die for them. As followers of Christ that believe in that, we have to proclaim it to any and all. This is from Mark 16, as Jesus talking, Jesus said to them, go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. For whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Go and proclaim. Go tell it. And those who, that, those who hear that and, and believe it will be saved, but those that don't will not be saved. It all starts with Jesus. It all starts with Jesus coming to this earth and living a perfect life and going to the cross and, and, and coming out of that grave. But, it, but it, and we're a part of that too, proclaiming that truth. A huge step in keeping the joy of Christmas alive within ourselves and to others is spreading the good news of why Jesus came, why God sent his son and, and that truth of God's love. And when we think about it, when we read the Christmas story, we read about the angels who brought these tidings. The angels came and proclaimed Jesus, and they said there was you know, great tidings of good news uh, for the whole world, and we have that same news. We have that same news because all people can be saved through the grace of God. All people can be saved through Christ's sacrifice. Listen, this season of Christmas uh, may be coming to a close. And it may be time to take down the Christmas decorations and, and put away the ugly sweaters. And, and for some of you, that makes you sad. Some of you, it makes you happy. But the truth and the joy of Christmas should never end. It should never end. We may flip the calendar into another year, but we cannot lose out on the greatness and the majesty of God's love for us and for all humanity. It may be time for us to move on from Christmas, but it is not time for us to move on uh, from what it means. 
As followers of Christ, this truth of Jesus coming to save us, it should be on our hearts and minds every single day. This truth should be the driving force in the way that we live our lives. This shouldn't just be something that we pick up here and there and put down or pick it up when we're supposed to celebrate it or pick it up when the calendar tells us it's time uh, to do it. But it shouldn't be something that should just fade away and be forgotten. This truth should be on the front of our hearts and the front of our minds every single day. And this truth of Jesus should be everything to us. Because this truth of Jesus, the fact that Jesus came and this joy that we have shows us the great love of God for us. You know, through this series over the last handful of weeks, uh, we've been walking through the series called God With Us. And, and, and yeah, we've been talking about the Christmas story, but the whole point of this series has been looking at God's love for us. Because when we think about the nativity, we think about, you know, all of the, the prophecies leading up to Jesus and Jesus coming and who Jesus is and who Jesus was and who he will forever be. It's nothing but a love letter from God to his people. It's nothing but God saying, this is how much I loved you. And this is how much I will forever love you. That even though we had sinned, and even though we had fallen short of the glory of God, even though we had turned our backs on God, even though we had become an enemy of God, even though we have pushed him away, even though we have soiled ourselves so poorly that there's no way that God would ever want to come down to us, that he loved us so much that he went to the ends of the earth to bring us back. The reason that Jesus was born, Emmanuel, God with us, God born here on earth, is because he greatly loves us. And that truth, that fact, that life-altering goodness of God is something that we can never let go of. That truth of God's love is what we need to make sure we start with every single day. Look at John's words in 1 John 3. He says, see, see what kind of love the Father has given to us so that we could be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is because they did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. He says, see what kind of love the Father has for us. How great of a sentence is that? See the kind of love that the Father has for humanity, that he would send Jesus to this earth, not coming as someone who's going to condemn the world, not coming as someone who's going to um, just take out all of mankind because of their terrible sin, not even as just someone who's going to come just to forgive them and pardon them so that they can go on living in their sin. No, he came and came to this earth so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be redeemed, so that we could be a part of the family, so that we could be called children of God. All because God loved us. And in response to that, we believe in Jesus, putting all of our hope and all of our trust in him. We die with him, putting off everything in our lives, our own selfish ambition and our fleshly desires. We live for him, fully dedicated to God and to the gospel of Jesus, and we proclaim the greatness of Christ to the ends of the earth. So even though this Christmas season is coming to an end, let's make it a point and a promise to not let the joys and the truths of Christmas end as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. And God, we are so thankful for Christmas. And God, we are so thankful for your love. God, we know that we didn't deserve it. We know that you should have just left us where we were. You should have just left us in our sin and left us in our brokenness. Broken pieces that could be never could never be put back together. A mess that could never be cleaned up. And, and, and people who were lost that could never be found. But God, because of your amazing grace and your amazing love for us, you sent Jesus. 
God, forgive us for the times where we have put that on the back burner, we have forgot about that, where we haven't been focused on that. Forgive us of that and break us of that so that as we live this life through the rest of this year and the next year and for the rest of our lives that we will live for you. That we will never hide the joy of your love. God, we love you more than yours. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. that we had the opportunity to come into your house. Um, be with us now as we leave this place. Uh, let us go full of your joy and full of your love so that we can proclaim you to a world that desperately needs you. God, we love you and we're yours. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.